Honestly, I have yet to meet a man that makes my life easier, not fucking harder. I walk like I talk like I act like I look like I think like my shit don't stink. I fuck like I suck like I ride like I taste like I look like my shit don't stink. I walk like I talk like I about. Mm, an hour and 20 minutes before I have to leave, but I need to get ready for this birthday brunch Obviously, I'm not eating shit when I'm there, but it's my girl's birthday So I gotta show my support But I asked you guys the other day on TikTok for like personal questions and like not fitness questions Just like get to know me. So I thought we would get ready together today I'm not gonna I'll link the products and shit I'll make another video like in-depth makeup hair tutorial But today I just kind of want to do like a answer some questions type of situation while I do my makeup get ready and that's what we'll do. Boom. I got my nitro cold brew already. It's just nitro, four pumps of sugar-free vanilla, and two Splenda. And I'll be looking down at this one if you see me looking downwards. So we're gonna start with some skin prep. This is the Glow Recipe Plump Plump Cream. Okay, I got a lot of questions about college and my degree and just kind of like how I got here. So I graduated high school in the spring of 2016. And then in October of 2016, after that summer, I moved across the country from Northern Wisconsin to downtown LA to go to FITM, which stands for the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. At this time, like I was really into makeup. So basically half of you guys wanna see like makeup tutorials and stuff because like that was my shit for a long time. So the degree I was originally getting was beauty industry, merchandising and marketing. And then about like the second quarter into college, I was like, I had a little freak out and I was like, hey, this is like a lot of fucking money to be spending for such a specialized degree. At the time I wanted to work in makeup, but I wanted to be on the business side of it. So then I kind of freaked out and they had a new degree, which was social media marketing. And I was like, oh, I think I should do it because like social media, like I switched from beauty to social because I could still get the same jobs in beauty, but in social media. But in my mind, it's like, every industry needs social media so it's like there's more opportunity so it just like made me feel better about spending so much fucking money on a degree but basically so i moved when i was 18 to downtown la my school was small so there was no like dorms so i originally like went there was no like meal plan like i never had to deal with any of that stuff um basically how my school worked is they just kind of had contracts with apartments in downtown la um and that's what student housing was. So I lived in like a two bedroom apartment like from the get go. So I was buying my groceries from the start. And at that time I was like balls to the fucking wall. I'm no longer living with my family. Cause growing up, it's like we're Midwest healthy, right? Like it's not really healthy, but my mom never kept shit in the house. Um, which is why as a child, I was like, well, we don't eat shitty. Like why am I fat? Like that was like my biggest struggle as a fucking kid. Is I'm like, we don't eat like trash. So why the fuck do I feel this way? Okay, this color match was stunning. Good job, Penzi. Um, and I really like the coverage of this too. So whatever, I moved there, I was eating like shit. I started smoking weed when I was there, partying a lot. So I was just eating all the fucking time. Um, really my freshman year was easy for me. So like I just partied honestly. Um, but the thing about my school is it wasn't like you had frat parties. So your options were I went to school because I basically decided to go to an all girls school. There was no clubs, no sports, none of that. And I'm like right in downtown LA. So you either went down the street to USC or you would take your fake ID and you'd go into a club. And so that's pretty much what I would do four times a week. And then end of my freshman year, I kept on getting sick and like cold sick, like bronchitis. And I'm like, you live in LA, why the fuck are you getting sick? Like make it make sense, bitch. And that's when I was like, okay, like it's time to just like start eating healthier, working out to feel good. And that was the start of my fitness journey. I was still partying when I first started. I've talked about this before. I accidentally bulked for a long time, meaning I was eating a lot of healthy foods, but I was still in a calorie surplus. Like my post-workout protein shake was like 600 calories. Like I didn't know what the fuck I was doing at all. I had no idea what I was doing at all. And then I went home for that summer. I was still working out. I will say that like I was consistent throughout college with working out. Diet was obviously where I, that's where you lost me was my diet. And there were periods throughout college where like, I would be strict. Like my junior year, I was really into fitness and really into bodybuilding. So I was really into it then. But then there were periods like my sophomore year, I was a little delinquent, like was partying constantly. But something that I don't think a lot of people understand too is like during those periods where I was partying a lot, I wasn't pissed that I wasn't making a ton of progress because we knew why I wasn't making any fucking progress. But yeah, I don't know, my college experience is really good. I basically was forced to move out of LA when COVID happened because I graduated 
ended up being in the summer of 2020, but I was supposed to graduate in the spring. Um, and what had happened then was everyone was like, oh, it's a two-week quarantine. I literally did not like my roommates at all, so I was not trying to be quarantined with those bitches. So I flew back to Wisconsin, and then that just kind of turned into what the fuck COVID was. Um, yeah. So... I don't know. I basically just partied a lot. I learned I learned how to lift in college for sure, and that's when I really like that's when Whitney Simmons was popping and like Jim Shark was honestly like at its peak. Is when I was in college, and then I had a friend um, that her boyfriend they're still together to this day. Um, he body he was a bodybuilder, so she like taught me a lot about training and stuff. I don't know. I just partied a lot. I worked so like. My freshman year, like, I'd always have internships, like, I interned at BuzzFeed my freshman year, I had a couple, like, fashion internships, um, I worked at European Wax Center, uh, well, <laughs> I was there, and that was honestly so fun, the ones in LA, super dope, like, all my coworkers, like, I miss, like, it's crazy, because I remember that, that Sunday before I was gonna fly home, we were all like, oh, this might be the last time we're gonna see each other, and we're like, nah, like, that's not gonna happen, I've not seen most of them, like, if my European Wax and their fam from over there, like, uh, it was, that was, like, the best job to have in college, because it's just a bunch of girls, like, and some people are like, oh my god, that's drama, nah, I'm not the type of person where I'm like, girls are drama, I've always gotten along with women, like, in my life, I've struggled to get along with men more than I have women. Um, I also get questions from people that are like, were you scared to move away? Like, was I scared? Yes, but it was something I always wanted to do. Like, ever since I was little, like, I never thought I was gonna live in Wisconsin for the rest of my life. Like, ever since I was little, little, I was like, I'm not gonna live here. So, like, college, it was always I was gonna move away. It wasn't even an option. And I've always been, like, a really independent person. Like, when I moved out of, um, my parents' house when I was 18, their friends would all joke that, <laughs> like, oh, the most mature member of the Vance family is out of the house like what are my parents gonna do so yeah I am so glad that I went to college far away and I did something scary I moved in with people I didn't fucking know I had no like no one over there but it was a good experience and I, people ask me if I'd move back to honestly I just think like right it served me for the time I was there but for right now I just don't think it's I feel like I'd be trying to relive something that already happened if that makes sense like I don't really feel like it would serve me at this point in my life, but I loved it. Well, it, actually, no, my freshman year, I fucking hated it. I wanted to move to, I wanted to transfer to University of Minnesota after my freshman year, but I eventually figured it out. I remember I went to a, <laughs> in like Venice, I went to a, a psychic because I basically just wanted her to tell me that I was not meant to be here and I was supposed to be, um, I was supposed to be, in Wisconsin or something and she was like no like you're supposed to stay here and I was pissed I was like bitch what the fuck are you talking about she was right but so yeah I don't know yeah my degree is in social media marketing and it's fucking ironic all my friends are like you literally tried so hard for so long to not do what you're doing because I worked on like the other side of social media like I was reaching out to influencers for brands that I was working for and now it's just kind of like switched around lots of questions about my love life you guys, the reason we don't talk about my love life is because it's non-existent. Um, I have not been on a date since, not this past August, but the one before. Um, given that's like a personal choice, I'm gonna be real. There, like with just how busy I am, I don't wanna spend my Wednesday evening with some random hinge date. Like, my free time is very important to me. And honestly, I have yet to meet a man that makes my life easier, not fucking harder. Um, so I don't really know. It's That's why you don't hear me talk about it, because there is no man I'm talking to, ever. Like, the last day I went on was last August, and somebody asked, like, worst date story. It wasn't even, like, bad. It was just kind of weird, because I don't go on dates, like, thinking, like, this is the love of my life, because I feel like that's how a lot of, especially women, like, we fuck ourselves over, is by, like, living the relationship before the date even fucking happens. Like, just go on the date and get to know someone new. Like, that's how I look at every single date I go on. And this dude, like, you could tell that he just, like, was looking at me like I could be his future wife. It was just fucking weird because he was in my DMs for, like, a year, was trying to take me out. And it, he would always fall through. And I called him out on it when he was like, oh, let's hang on. I was like, you're obviously drunk or something every time you hit me up because, like, what the fuck is this? And he was like, no, like, let's meet here Wednesday. This is last, like, July that this happened. Or last August. It was just weird. He was like only like, like I'm asking him questions. I like just getting to know him and he's giving me like one word answers as if like 
he didn't fucking invite me on this date. And I'm like, bro, this is so awkward. Like, I remember I finished my, like, short vodka soda in, like, 30 minutes. And he was like, oh, you finished already? I'm like, how the fuck have you not finished your drink? Like, this date is awful. More just awful because I'm like, why can't you speak? Like, it's, it is rare that I go to a bar and can't get along with someone. Like, it's not that hard to have a drink with somebody and just get to know them. Like, that's not difficult. And then I go to the bathroom and I come back and he's like, can I ask you a question? I'm like, oh, finally, you're gonna ask me something. All right. He goes, how do you think this is going? And I said, to be honest, not very well. And he's like, I'm sorry for wasting your time. I'm sorry I didn't work out. I said, it's not a waste of time. Like, I'm always down to get to know someone new. And then I offered to split the bill and he's like, no, it's okay. And then I just walked home because even though it was like close to my house, because I was like, I'm not fucking going to wait for an Uber outside or something. And you're going to see, no. Mm -mm. And then he like literally unfollowed me like on his way home. Like I was like, is it that deep, my sir? It was just fucking weird. But other than that, like I obviously have had many failed relationships, but I don't look at those dates as failures because I'm like, it's really not that fucking hard to get a drink with somebody and like have a decent time. Like, that's how I look at first dates. Dating is fun to me. I will be honest, like, when I'm in prepping stuff, it's just not... Like, it's... I, the last thing I'm gonna do during prep is, like, oh, let's go on a coffee date. Like, fuck that. Oh, ooh, I'm kind of into this color. I just got this is... Un Encourage? Un from Rare Beauty? Um, uh, but yeah, so Love Life. It's one of those things where it's, like, I'm aware that nobody's gonna, like pull it to my door but I also have always had the mentality of like my life goal isn't to get married like my life goal has never been like oh like even as like a little girl like I never thought I'd have the big wedding when I was like even like five years old like, I never thought that was me like when I looked up to people as a little girl it was always like single divorced people who like made fucking money if I'm gonna be honest with you like, if I looked, when I was little and I, like, looked around at lives that I wanted, it was never the people that had kids and were married. Like, ever. And it's not that I'm opposed to children. I just, it's not one of those things where I'm like, if this doesn't happen for me, I'm not going to be fulfilled with my life. That's kind of how I view it. Because I got a lot of questions about, do you want kids? Like, do you want to get married? The way I look at life is like, life is gonna happen and I just watch people try to plan things all the fucking time and they're miserable. So, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. Let's talk more about growing up, Kenzie, right? You guys seem to wanna know about that. Was your experience in the dance world toxic? Mine was. So a lot of you know I was a dancer growing up. Honestly, dance team is a big reason why I think I have the discipline I have and when you guys are like, how did you build it? Like, were you just like this? So, growing up as a dancer, I was not somebody that my body was not made for dance. I'm not a flexible person. I'm not a limber person. Like, I just, my body was not made for dance. And so, really, it was me fighting my body a lot of the time. Like, I remember my coach in high school was like, it's so insane because she's like, you literally work harder than anyone. But, like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, like my flexibility, like, I would literally stretch for, like, two and a half hours every night, do an hour of conditioning, and that's without dance practice. But anyways, so something that, like, really, like, when I look back on, like, the event that for sure, like, made me into who I am today. So in high school, basically it was normal. Like, so if you were like on like the club team growing up, like it was kind of normal if you were a good dancer to be on varsity. And I did not make varsity my freshman year and I was fucking crushed. I didn't make it sophomore year, I was fucking crushed. And like, there was nothing, like that was the first time, like when I talk about having a goal, that there's nothing that you want more than that. Like there was fucking nothing I wanted more than to be on Eau Claire North varsity fucking dance team. Like there was nothing I wanted. And, like, the, just the amount of tears that were shed, I'm just, like, every tryout, like, opening up that thing, it's saying junior varsity, like, the day that it said varsity, like, I will never fucking forget, like, that was the best day of my existence. But that was really, I think, the, like, pivotal point for me, where it was just, like, that's where I really learned that if you want something, and you really fucking want it, you can get it done. Yeah, you might have genetics against you, you might have this against you, but hard work, that's gonna beat talent every fucking time. Okay, not every time, but a lot of the time. Um, but I was never like a ballet dancer, so it wasn't toxic in the sense of like, oh, my dance teacher was like, you need to be skinny. Given I was always the girl in the biggest dress size, like I was always the biggest girl on the team, right? So it was more just like me comparing myself to other girls not the girls themselves if that makes sense um but i know a lot of people like i was like the kind of dance we did if you follow like college dance teams we did like palm kick hip-hop 
if you're from like Minnesota, Wisconsin, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I didn't really have the whole uh like ballet toxic like you have to do skinny thing because obviously I'm not shaped like a dancer. Yeah I have thick legs that dance obviously helped with but that wasn't really like an issue for me. It was more so my comparison in my own head with the other girls. But that had nothing to do with them. <laughs> it was really just my own insecurity if we're being real here. Okay, what do you do for work? Do you love it? A lot of people asking me about my career goals. Let's start here. I'm gonna start like when I started working with Kerrigan, that's when I, when I started working with my coaches, kind of when I started posting social media content. So that's why I kind of like to describe it in that kind of timeline. So in January of 2021, very beginning of the year, I started working with Kerrigan. And I had just started posting social media content in November of that year. I was working at this marketing agency. It fucking sucks. I was working way too much, not getting paid shit. I literally should have worked at McDonald's for what I was paying in taxes for what I was making at this place. And I had a coworker that we basically like trauma bonded together. So we would be sending like voice memos to each other all day long because we didn't want to be wanted to be on record. <laughs> and um and we would just like talk and whatever. We became close and she was like you know so much about this fitness thing. Like, why don't you post it? I was like, ah, oh, like, I just feel, and she's like, I was like, I don't think I can. Like, I just feel like, I didn't feel like I was fit enough to be posting at this time, right? And she was like, Kenzie, like, you have this look. Like, she's like, you have to fucking post. And so she's the one that really got it, kind of got me thinking like, okay, hey, bitch, you say you don't care what other people think, but why won't you post your fitness stuff? Like, hmm? So she helped me post then. Um, but I started working with Kerrigan in January of 2021. I started posting on TikTok. My viral video went off in like May of 2021. And okay, let me go back. Started working with Kerrigan in January. February, I woke up just one day from an email from my boss yelling at me over something that was literally out of my control. And I was like, yeah, I don't get paid enough for this shit. Not at all. Because for reference, I was getting paid $15 an hour as a freelancer. And when you're a freelancer, you pay double in taxes. Like I literally should have worked in fast food for what I was making at that establishment. And I just woke up one day and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna pay enough for this shit. Immediately applied to a gym. Um, and I started personal training full time. And I did that for a month. And then I moved to a different gym. Um, basically, it like it was kind of a pay cut, but not really because personal training, like at a corporate gym, you're not making shit. Like let's be real, you're making minimum wage like not enough to survive in the city, right? So I would be doing like Uber Eats while I was personal training at first, just so I could make sure I could pay my rent. But the way that I looked at it is I'm young, single, like I'm the only person I have to take care of. Like really the risks are, I need to find a way to put a roof over my head and to eat. But it, to me, I was like, it's worth it. Like you're young, like this is the time when you're supposed to take risks. So I was like, fuck it. Like I told myself, you are never gonna be happy if you don't find a way to make fitness a part of your career. Like I knew that I had to figure that out somehow, some way, because I was just trying to make this like corporate marketing thing work for me when I knew that's not like, that was not where my passion lied at all. And at that time I was already coaching some friends and family just like on the side because like, obviously I had known how to do fitness shit. And so I would like help people. And once I started personal training, I was like, let me just see if anybody would want to be coached by me. Like who isn't somebody I know like in real life. And I put a feeler out there and that's how my coaching went off because y'all ate that shit up. And so I, my, somebody asked like, what do you do for work? So I am a full-time online coach, meaning I give you your workouts, your nutrition, we have weekly check-ins, you have one-on-one -on -one access to me, right? I'm not taking new clients right now. Um, I'll talk about that more when I talk about my future goals. So that's what I do, like that is my full-time. Influencing, I will say in the past five months, has money, basically, I mean, I'm at the point now where if I wanted to influence full time, I could. I literally refuse to do that though because I do not, well, first of all, you guys can all wake up tomorrow and decide you hate me. And I don't want my livelihood dependent on if people on the internet like me or not. Like I would rather just grind <laughs> and like look at influencing money as extra money because I know myself and I know like how I get with like hate comments and I like they get to me like I won't I won't lie like they 1000% get to me um and I don't think the pressure of like influencing full-time and not having any other work 
would be good for me from like a mental standpoint in the long term so i'm not taking clients right now i will be taking new clients in the new year i'll announce when i am but i eventually want to like the goal is not to do lifestyle clients forever lifestyle is just like any regular person not competing has a fitness goal they want to achieve right i want to coach competitors at some point well that's definitely a big goal of mine um in the next few years uh just learning from people that know what they're doing and just furthering my education in that sense um but yeah so that is what i do for work and then social media obviously um yeah Okay, this is a good one. What do you look for in friendships? So I talked about earlier how I've never had a problem getting along with women, ever. Like, I am a girl's girl through and fucking through. Um, like, I've never, ever struggled to have girlfriends. I will say, like, one of my biggest flexes is that I'm very good at picking friends. Like, I'm not one of those people that's, like, has... I've had, like, maybe one or two friendship falling outs in my entire life. Like, I am very, like my biggest flex is my gut instinct i thought everyone had it like i can tell within about mm, a minute and a half whether i'm gonna fuck with you or not like i can tell right away like the amount of times in my life where i have thought somebody was eh from the get-go my friends are like oh what do you mean and then months later they fuck them over and they're like oh kenzie was right yeah i can like that is my biggest flex most of my friends i've had for years and years and years when it comes to friendships for me i cannot be friends with people that are chronically insecure because they make you feel like shit because they feel like shit about themselves. If that makes me a shitty person, I don't care. Um, at this point, like when it comes to adult friendships, I'm no longer trying, like I am no longer engaging in relationships that are one-sided. Like that's just not fucking happening for me at this point. And my friendships also, like all of my friends, they know how busy I am. I know how busy they are. We know we're still friends. We're gonna catch up when we catch up. But like friends that like need to be texting me all the time or need like, that's just not me. Like one of my best friends, Alana, I've, we've been friends for years and years and years and years. She literally like, we'll talk like once every three weeks, just catch up. Like it needs to be that kind of relationship. Like I can't do the whole like best friend on your hip thing because if I can't hang out with you this day, are you gonna be pissed at me? Because uh, you, no. That and then also just like good fucking people. I don't know. I, I've seen these videos on TikTok recently about girls being like, oh, you don't want to go with friends that are ugly. Like. What's wrong with you? Like, there's actually something fucking wrong with you. What's your favorite type of holiday food, Thanksgiving or Christmas? So I've actually gotten a lot of questions about this since obviously I'm prepping through, um, I'm gonna be prepping through Thanksgiving. So I'm not your opinion, I don't even like Thanksgiving. Like, the food, I'm not even talking about the food. I don't like Thanksgiving because there's one person that's fucking stressed the entire time. It's like, whatever, like, I can have beige carbs whenever the fuck I want. Like, Thanksgiving isn't, like, my thing, so I don't feel like I'm even missing out on it. Because when I lived in L.A., I could only, like, really afford to come home for Christmas. So, this past year was the first year that I spent Chris uh, Thanksgiving with my family. Um, oh, ew. Was the first year I spent Thanksgiving with my family since I was a senior in high school. Like, my family, we never really have, like, a... Oh, shit. We never really have, like, a specific plan like every year it's like okay like what extended family members house are we gonna invite her to get invite ourselves to this year okay that was waste too fucking light but we will blend her out it's fine but yeah so i'm a christmas bitch christmas is just like bigger in my family i don't know yeah christmas will on my dad's side of the family that's when we do like christmas eve and stuff and like that was my grandpa's thing was like christmas so i would say christmas is just like a bigger thing in my family Favorite podcast? So you guys always ask me about podcasts, but I think you want fitness ones. I don't really listen to that many fitness podcasts, if I'm going to be honest. Um, basically, you guys... Okay, so I bodybuild as a hobby, right? And my job is fitness. So it's like most of my waking thoughts are fitness. So something that I found has really helped in this prep is like my entertainment not being fitness content and like just consuming lifestyle content and shit that isn't fitness just for my own sanity um so podcast i'm not really a fitness podcast girly favorite podcast of all time is girls gotta eat that literally changed my entire outlook on just dating my past relationships like they literally changed my fucking life like when i talk about like earlier i was talking about um like girls like living um the relationship before they even started that's where i learned that shit from right um, but yeah, that podcast literally changed my life. I love Katie Bilotti's um, Match Made in Manhattan. It's her and two of her friends. They just talk about like dating and um, 
uh, dating in New York. So, I don't know, just like shit like that. Um, but I don't really listen to as many podcasts anymore now that I don't commute like that. Damn, y'all nosy as fuck. All these questions are, relationship, who are you talking to? Do you like anyone? Do you have a crush? <laughs> okay, a lot of these are like, what other hobbies do you have outside of fitness? So I think a lot of people forget, like, even though this is my job, like, bodybuilding, it's not like... Okay, so I get... It's hard. It's, I don't get paid to bodybuild. I just influence and bodybuild, so somehow it's like I am being paid to be a bodybuilder, if that makes sense. Um, but, like, that is my hobby, right? And outside of that, this, like... Makeup has always been a big thing. Like, just, like, you guys don't see it as much from me, like, when I'm in prep, obviously. But I like dressing up. Like, I like makeup. Like, just, like, girly shit like that. Um, but honestly, like, I struggle to think of hobbies that I have. Like, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I do. Hobbies are in off-season, I don't know. I like to train. I like to do makeup. I like to be outside. And that's that, basically. When you were in high school, what did you envision your life would be at this age? I envision, honestly, that I'd be living in Chicago because when I was younger, like, Chicago is, like, the Midwest city, so that's where, like, everyone lives, right? So I always thought that I would, like, settle down in Chicago, which is kind of funny, like, looking back because I'm glad I moved here earlier. Like, I, like, I envisioned myself moving to Chicago when I was in my later 20s, um, but I definitely always imagined the corporate, like, marketing, like, businesswoman life, like, that was... Like, when I was little, like, when I was eight, I literally, I remember telling my mom I wanted to work on Wall Street. I fucking suck at math and all finance, so I don't really know why I thought that was in my cards. I definitely didn't think that this was going to be my life. If you're, if I, bro, even four years ago, you would have told me, oh, yeah, you're going to work in fitness, bitch, fuck that, what? I would have never believed you. Boom, okay, those are the eyes. I'm just going to pop on a little bit of a highlighter, and then we're going to do a quick little hair situation. Also, you guys, I kind of thought about this, like, I kind of want to do, like, a what would Kenzie do, like, little segment, like, because I get, like, DMs about, like, advice and stuff a lot, but I think it'd be fun to do, like, a sit-down video like this about it, but I don't know how to do that, like, should I make an email that people can submit it to so that they can be anonymous, because I can't do, like, a little text box on Instagram because it's not going to be long enough, you know, but if that's something that you guys would be interested in, I'll let your girl know. And if you're wondering what I did with my hair after cardio, so I had cardio this morning and I have another cardio session tonight. Is it convenient that I have to get all glammed right now and then I have cardio later? No, but it is what it is. But I literally just like dried the sweat into my hair and doused my hair in dry shampoo. Just soaked that bitch. Um, okay, let's go back to the dating question because y'all just want to fucking know, I guess, while I let my curling iron heat up. So this girl goes, why aren't you dating? Did I miss a chapter? So I have always been like almost chronically independent. I told my brother that one day. I was like, I am independent, but like almost to like an older sister, like trauma default. Like I just always have been like the single bitch. And it's almost like at a point where I'm so far deep down the single, like your, I'm the single friend, like pipeline that it's like, okay, if I am to get a boyfriend, it's like a big deal now. It's not like just, oh, like, yeah, okay, I have a new boyfriend. It's like, oh my God, because I've never been in a relationship in my entire life, right? I look at relationships as you're an extension of me and I'm not just letting anyone be an extension of me. Like, you're not, no. Like, to me, who you date is a representation of who you are. Um, and to me, I've just always, I've never been in a rush to get married or anything or be in a relationship. Like, I don't feel any sense of urgency to be with another human being. Because to me, I'm like, if you elevate my life and you make my life better, fucking awesome. If not, fuck off. Yeah, I even, so when my friend Alicia got married, or no, my friend Alana got married this June, I remember telling my mom, I'm like, does this thing make you sad? She's like, Kenzie, I know you're not fucking getting married while I'm probably alive. I'm like, okay, you my brother. Like, I've never been, like, I'm the opposite of codependent. Like, I struggle to trust people more than the other way around. Basically, just chronically independent by myself. Like, I enjoy being by myself. Like, I was talking to my friend Eve about this the other day. Because when people talk about being lonely, I, like, just don't relate. Like, I, it is so rare that I feel lonely. Even though I'm alone all of the fucking time, like, I love being by myself to be honest yeah it's not like i'm like purposefully like in a like a lot of people are like oh i'm in my single era like i'm working on myself bitch i've been working on myself for the past 24 years 
And that's also a big fault of mine in dating is I'm the opposite of a fixer. You know how girls like, oh, I can fix him. Bitch, I've worked so much on myself over the years. Why the fuck can't you do that on your own? I don't want to teach you shit. Like, why do I have to teach you how to be a decent human being? I'm not gonna, no. Mm -mm. Is that immature? It might be, I don't fucking care because I just don't have the time to teach a grown man how to be a nice human being. Okay, I also just got this curling iron and I'm like reteaching myself how to curl my hair with a iron. So just keep that in mind. Okay, that kind of works. That's kind of how my hair does it, does it? Okay, I kind of did something. What's your morning routine like? Okay, let's go through a prep morning. So I've been struggling with my sleep as of late. So I'll typically like wake up once at like three and then I'll go back to bed, wake up at like eight ish. I wake up, hit my vape a couple, vape a couple times because I'm usually fucking starving. Oh, I don't want to do it this way. I want to do it this way. Um, and then I get my ass out of bed, somehow put some clothes on. Fuck. <laughs> um, somehow put some clothes on. Uh, what happens after that? Okay, that's not how I'm supposed to do this either. Okay, so in the morning, I will wake up, go to the bathroom, hit my vape in my bed a couple times, <laughs> so that I don't feel like I want to vomit because of how hungry I've been. Like, cause basically I'll wake up in the middle of the night because I'm hungry. It's it's an owl. I won't even lie. So I'll do that, and then I just get my ass in my kitchen, fill up my water, take my Yohimbang, which is my Legion Four, just that fat burner, get my ass out of my house and go and do cardio. And then after cardio, I'll come home eat and then I'll start with my work day. It's not really that extensive. If you've watched any of my vlogs, you've seen the morning routine. Okay, this is a good one. Where do you see yourself settling down? Do you think Houston is gonna be forever home? your forever home? I do not think Houston will be my forever home. If I'm gonna be honest, I don't really, since I don't have this like, oh, I need to get married. The thought of settling down has never really crossed my head <laughs> or I don't even know why I was supposed to say that. Like when I think of settling down, I think of when my parents get older and my brother is older and have children, like I'm going to want to live closer to them. So that's when I'll move back to the Midwest. I can see myself living in Chicago again. Like it's not like I fucking hate Chicago. I just feel like there's better opportunity elsewhere for me right now. Okay. Period. The way that I just, I like how that curled. I'm here for that. Yeah, so I don't really know. Um, I just more so think about like when my parents are older, I'll want to be closer to them and my brother. My brother's not really one to move far away. He's going to stay home. Um, more than likely, obviously, you never know what life brings you. But that's kind of how I picture him. Um, so yeah, also, I don't know, I got questions about my family, siblings. So I have one younger brother. We are three and a half years apart. He is the absolute fucking love of my life. Like... No, like if I ever go on TikTok and somebody left a hate comment about him, I would literally, no. That would make me commit. He is in, he's a sophomore in college. He just turned 21. But you guys will see him when we go to Mexico as a family over New Year's. I'm super excited for that. You guys, honestly, like when people ask me about, they're like, oh, you have six weeks left. Like genuinely, I feel like December is going to be the peak of my existence. <laughs> Like, December is going to be so fucking fun because I have my shows and then I'm going to the Olympia and I'm going with Dark Sport and like, it's just going to be so fun. And then it's Christmas. Obviously, I get to like eat, eat the food because I'll be done with my fucking show by that point. Do you guys see me? How much of a struggle this is for Gunzi. And then my family is going to Mexico together. Like, it's just going to be so fun. Like, I'm, I'm really excited about post show, if I'm going to be honest. Um, because I just don't have, like, when people are like, are you nervous about, like, gaining weight? Like, no, because I need to gain weight. And honestly, like, that's why people ask me, like, how do you deal with, like, being so lean and, like, gaining weight afterwards? Because I know that I, like, the goal isn't to look like this all the fucking time, y'all. It hurts, bro. I, I fall into the toilet if I don't sit forward enough on it. Like, <laughs> it's not, like, my body right now is not my goal. And honestly, I'm just excited to be out of a deficit and just being in off season. I told Kerrigan, I said, I don't even care if I get fluffy. Like, I don't want to do a mini cut. I don't want to do none of that shit. Like, I just want to, um, like live and just get fucking huge build and just like be able to be a person like that. The, oh, fuck. Ooh. 
after show plans. Like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people, I can see where it would be a struggle because you guys have seen my journey. You guys know, like, I've been overweight and whatever. But I didn't go into this prep thinking, like, oh, this is what I want to look like. Because even right now, like, is it cool to have striations on my shoulders? Yes. But, like, I literally just feel like a seven-year-old woman. Like, I, there's no other way to explain it. <laughs> like, genuinely. Lots of questions about pets. I don't have any pets. I would like to get a dog. I just kind of feel like it's selfish for me to get a dog at this point in my life. You guys, like, know how much I travel. Like, I just travel a lot, and I'm just not home, and I just feel like if I'm going to have a dog, I would rather get one when I, like, am moving in Houston and have a bigger space. Because, you guys, when I move to Houston, my apartment, <laughs> it's going to be lit. For what I pay in Chicago, I can get, like, a nice-ass two-bedroom. Have you ever thought about making a podcast? I'd love to listen to you, even if it's not fitness-related. Thank you. So I definitely have. I actually have been thinking about doing a podcast before you guys even know who, knew who I was. In quarantine, I wanted to create a podcast. Like, I literally have the equipment. <sighs> the struggle with a podcast is I can do it on my own, and honestly, I'm leaning more towards that. When it comes to, like, a pod, like, I know it's like, oh, it's just a podcast. But, like, I'm not getting into business with just anyone. Like, <laughs> I, that's what, partnerships don't always work that way. Like, when they do, it's great. But... Like, when I do it, like, I just want to make sure it's right, but that's a big goal of mine in 2023. Like, obviously, right now in prep, there's not a lot of, like, I'm not <laughs> taking on a ton of new clients and shit. Like, I'm just kind of letting the rest of this prep do its thing. However, you guys, um, I think I got a videographer for my show because my first show is not going to be live streamed. I'm going to have one of my family members go on live for you guys. But I was talking to one of the guys in the gym, he's like, oh yeah, like, I have someone for you. Because I was like, I literally, okay, fuck. I was like, I literally just need somebody to, uh, that's good enough, um, like follow me around like with my camera, just so that I don't have to worry about vlogging that day. Um, so I think I got a videographer for, for my first show, so that's, we still need to like talk details and shit, but he's available, so that's exciting. But no, there's a lot of exciting stuff happening over the next couple months for me, so I'm just, I'm excited. That's why it's like when people are like, oh, like, how do you deal with cravings? Like, once you know that this shit is temporary, like, I know I don't have to eat like this forever. Okay, what hair colors have you gone through? Because y'all bitches stay praying for my downfall. This color right here is like my natural color. I have just gotten back to this over the past couple years. So, first time I colored my hair would have been my senior year of high school. I got like, you know like when it's like a dark brown but it's like has like a purple undertone that you can see in the sun? I got that, which was fine like for the time being. I don't think I'd do it again if I'm gonna be honest. And then I started dyeing my hair blue black, so like jet black, like the darkest it's gonna fucking go, right? Started doing that all throughout college. I would box dye it, go and get it done. It was cool for the time being. Now it's just like too harsh. For me, like, it's because it really only looks good because it was so cool toned when I'm tan and my makeup's done. Um, and so when my I'm not tan and my makeup's not done, it would just look so. It just made me look so cool toned and didn't like my. I don't know. I, I look back on it and I only like it when I'm like dressed up like at the club. Because I used to wear like long like black extensions like my senior year of high school, not high school of college. Oh well. Yeah, so I did that and then tried to maintain that but then when I moved to Chicago I actually went to a hairdresser and literally when I went to her I had like three levels of demarcation like I had like my box dye from quarantine the other box dye and then the salon dye so we've been so like when you guys are like oh my god you should dye it black I'm like no way in fucking hell because I have for the past almost two years we've been trying to make that not happen and I started putting some light pieces in it I'll never go full blonde so don't even ask uh, like, this is, like, do you know how scared I was to even go this bright? Like, this is, like, my hairdresser's always like, I promise you, I'm not gonna make you platinum. Because I was always so, so scared. But I like my hair color this color. I'll eventually probably take the blonde out and just do my natural. But there's not really anything else I'd want to do. Boom. And when you guys ask me, like, what my goals are not fitness related, I kind of struggle to answer those because, like, my job is fitness. So, like my career goals are still going to be fitness related if that makes sense are you today what little you thought you would be and what do you think you'll be in another 20 plus years okay that's fucking terrifying to think of so i would like to think that little kenzie 
like thought this was gonna happen um she definitely didn't little kenzie like basically i don't know how to explain like it's not even like my body that little kenzie would be shocked by little kenzie would be proud of the fact that i live on my own i own my own business and i work for myself if i'm gonna be honest like little kenzie would be like yeah Growing up, Kenzie's a fucking boss. That's what little Kenzie would say about me if I'm going to suck my own ass for a couple seconds. People ask me, like, what's your proudest moment, too? I'll get that question a lot on my Q&As. And I always say the life I've built for myself because everything I'm doing now, for reference, like, was not a part of the original plan at all. And it was a lot of me just being like, fuck it, let's fuck around, find out, see what happens. And there were a lot of people in my life that were doubting what I was doing. And I don't know, I just... I knew it was gonna work out for me. I like I knew I was gonna find a way to make it work out. And the fact that I've made this my career, like just makes me really proud of like everything. Because I look back like when I first started training my gym, I remember like I was interviewing and I just could not get a fucking job in marketing here. Like it was just so hard. I remember the gym that I still do cardio at now, like I remember like getting an email from Nike that like I went through like four interviews, nothing. Like I remember crying in that bathroom that day, like my life has just changed so much um and i don't know if anything like i just think that my life is now like a representation of if you do what you love it's gonna happen like it'll come because even though it was a struggle in the beginning obviously like i still made it work and like because this is what i love like i love fitness like i remember the first day working in the gym i was like I go to work and I get to be in a gym. Like, that was just like wild to me. I was like, this is my fun place. Like, what do you mean I get to work here? So yeah, God, this is such a fucking shit show, you guys. Me, I'm like, I love fashion and beauty. See, I don't like hair though. It's fine. Um, but yeah, because I remember in college, I told myself, I remember telling my mom this, like, I'll know I made it once I have my own apartment, um, once I have my own apartment and an espresso machine. And I have both. And it's funny because like, when I'm looking at Houston apartments, like sometimes you just have to remind yourself like where you were because this time last year, we're coming up on a year on when my friend Sam, if you guys are new here, my best friend who I moved to Chicago with, she passed away November 3rd of last year. So we're coming up on a year and, but around this time last year, her and her boyfriend were gonna move in together and that was like the first time I was like, she, cause she thought she was gonna have to like be both places or whatever and I was like, honestly, like I'd love to turn your room into an office and that was like such a, an accomplishment of mine that like I could afford this rent by myself. I don't know what I'm rambling on. Basically I'm just sucking my ass for a couple seconds because I want to. I don't think I thought I'd be doing this, but I think little Kenzie would be happy with what I'm doing. Okay, and another question I get all the time is who my favorite like influencers are. And I struggle to answer this question for you guys because I don't, like the people I follow, they're either body, like who I look for inspiration is bodybuilders. Like I don't really look at influencers, like fitness influencers as like inspiration. Like I, if I like your content, I like your content, but most of the influencers are like my friends. So like I'm gonna tell you Kaylin, I'm gonna tell you, uh, um, Kayla, I'm gonna tell you Peyton, like, just people that I think are dope, like, that's what I'm gonna tell you who to follow, like, people that, like, are with this shit and aren't gonna tell you to, I don't know, take a green spot or to bloat you. Because, like, the amount of times that you guys are like, what do you think about this person? And I'm like, who is that? And I go to their page and they have, like, five million followers. I'm like, oh, my bad. But let me actually think for a second, though. No, y'all. Simply Mander on YouTube. That girl, it's wild because we're like mutuals now. She taught me how to track my macros in college. Like 1000%. Like if you are struggling with tracking your macros, making meals, weighing things, cooked, not cooked. She has every video under the fucking sun on it. Like I promise you. She's incredible. I always recommend Jeff Nippard to beginners. Whitney Simmons taught me how to lift when I first started. I had no idea like what a shoulder press was. So like all of her like dumbbell only videos were super, super helpful. But yeah, I don't really know. I don't watch a ton of, like, people always ask about, like, prep vlogs, like, what I watch during cardio and shit. I watch, like, Kerrigan's old, um, my coach Kerrigan, her old prep vlogs. I'll watch those during cardio sometimes. I always get the question of, like, how I found Kerrigan. I've been following her, like, just as a competitor, like, influencer for, like, three years before I even considered reaching out to Hustle Harder. It's wild now that we're like such good friends too, because I'm like, I've been watching you forever. Like I, like when I went to her house the first time, I'm like, I have seen this kitchen so many fucking times. <laughs> like, it's just kind of crazy to, when you sit down and really think about it.
But yeah, I don't really watch a ton of prep vlogs. What I really love watching is like lifestyle vlogs. Like I've really been into Danielle Carolyn. Um, she's like an OG YouTuber too. But she, like, when she was in college, I never really liked her vlog. Not like that. I just didn't relate to them because I didn't go to, like, a big school or anything. All of her, like, New York vlogs I love. Obviously, you guys know I fuck with Aaliyah's face. Aaliyah's face, um, Kyra, those Atlanta vlogger girlies. Like, I just fucking adore them. Okay, I love how this curled so much better than yesterday. Because that means I don't have to do my, like, blowout, like, in the front. <laughs> Sometimes I'll do that. But we're doing good on time, because all I have to do is get dressed. It's warm in Chicago, but it's like still fall vibes. So I think what I'm going to do is just wear my black fit jeans with like a little booty and then a Skims like tank top bodysuit with like a crop jacket, because then I can take it off if I'm hot. But it's fully like 75 out. It's been so beautiful the past couple days, which is wild because it was freezing earlier this week. Even though it's weird, because since I'm in prep, obviously my body fat is low, I'm colder. So I feel like it's like zero degrees out when it's... 30 degrees out here just because I'm so fucking cold all the time <laughs> but speaking of um I'm super excited to see Kaylin you guys know that's like my bitch so she just her and John her boyfriend um I'll put her Instagram here if you guys don't follow her I feel like I just talk about her all the time because I feel like if you know me you know Kaylin um but they just moved to Austin and I'm gonna go and see them in a couple weeks so I can't wait for them I'm super excited I'm um, a Midwest girly. Um, they're from Michigan, so they just drove down, what, yesterday, two days ago? So I love seeing my friends just, like, start new chapters and doing things that are, like, scary, basically. Like, I just love, I love seeing my friends level up. That's another thing about the friend question. If your friends are secret haters, bitch, get new ones. Like, if your friends are not your number one supporters, get fucking new ones. Like, they should, nah, I'm telling you. Like, if your friends are not the first people to share your shit, to buy your shit, no. They ain't the ones, baby. Like, can we talk about even, like, so Sam, my friend that passed, obviously, her younger sister, who is now my younger sister, Deanna, Illy bitch, um, she bought Jack Girl shit when it came out. And I literally, <laughs> I texted her and said, I'm refunding you, here's a discount code. I'm not having, like, I was like, bitch, my dead fucking best friend's sister's not paying for Jack Girl shit. But even her, she's like, no way, like, I want to pay for it. Like, you made it. Like, those are the people that you want in your life. <laughs> like, people that are going to support everything you do. Okay. So this is the hair. I'm going to put on an outfit. I pretty much went through all the questions, you guys. All y'all want to know about is my relationships. Am I talking to anyone? Am I fucking anyone? That's all you fucking care about. <laughs> but I'm gonna get dressed and then it's time to go to brunch. Where are I'm on a meeting, it's fine. <laughs> Me and my Diet Coke against the world. All right, you guys, so I forgot to um, film my outfit earlier, but I'm already back home. I'm eating just some lettuce and chicken. It's like 4.30. This is why I like going out and not drinking, like and doing, like just going out during prep is because I'm not thinking about not eating. Like it was more of like a day party than a brunch. So I didn't even have to worry about like the awkwardness of like, oh, I'm not ordering anything. Um, so it was fun. I just had my Diet Coke, um, danced for a while, but it was cool. Funny because Hector like does not, like he's such a homebody. It's so weird seeing him like at like, a party setting like it was just so funny yeah, so I'm eating this I'm gonna go get like cardio done and then I'll insert some photos because I, I did like a TikTok get ready with me um like for my outfit so I'll show you guys that but we're gonna do that get this cardio done but that was get to know me I guess I don't know you get some more get to know me even more over the next couple months on this channel so if you guys have any other ideas or if you guys kind of like this style of video if you guys want me to do makeup tutorial hair tutorial let me know what you want to see um but yeah so I don't know I, I've had a lot of fun with this channel the past couple weeks YouTube has been a struggle as you guys know but I think we're figuring it out so I'm excited to make more content for you guys um but yeah so that's the video I don't know subscribe bitches I'll talk to you later I walk like I talk like I act like I look like I think like my shit don't stink. I fuck like I suck like I ride like I taste like I look like my shit don't stink. I walk like I.